So I will firstly pass the time to Dr. Lee. All right, thank you, uh, Dr. Fong. Um, give me a second uh, so that I would like to share my screen with you guys. All right. Uh, good evening. So um, first of all, I would like to give my friends to the uh, Funder Institute's invitation um, that um, I can share uh, my uh, experience as a biotech startup um, uh, in Hong Kong. Okay. And I think uh, that also uh, exemplify how we can make use of Founders Institute's uh, health uh, vertical to uh, promote and then grow our, our, our business, okay? So uh, as I mentioned, uh, Eight Logics uh, is a, a startup of featuring uh, technology on female fertility. And in fact, uh, we also work on male fertility, but, but this uh, at, at the moment, we largely focus on female fertility technology. And um, my name is Tiao. Uh, I uh, work as a scientist uh, back in the state uh, at National Institute of Health um, from 2001 to 2011. And in 2011, I moved back to Hong Kong to take on my faculty position at the Chinese University of Hong Kong in the School of Biomedical Sciences. So this uh, startup was actually uh, founded um, after we have a very successful uh, research outcome uh, while I was uh, as a faculty at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. So um, Egg Logics was founded in 2018 and we got uh, moved into Science Park in um, 2021. So for tonight, I would like, like to share uh, how the startup landscape in Hong Kong of uh, like biotech uh, from the biotech perspective and how, uh, what exactly is uh, Incubar program? And uh, for those of you who didn't know, uh, this is a very wonderful program that you can get uh, funding up to six million Hong Kong dollar to start your gym and translate your uh, biotechnology uh, from uh, bench side to best side. Okay, so um, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we focus on the uh, female uh, fertility technology. Uh, the reason is uh, we have a very immediate lead uh, for fertility treatment. As you can see uh, on the screen, uh, the demand for IVF, what we call in vitro fertilization, uh, has uh, skyrocketed uh, over uh, the last decade. This is exactly not only for drug treatment, but also for the fertility preservation in terms of egg freezing. So that's why the market is huge. and. Um, but sadly, uh, in terms of success rate, uh, no matter it's in the state or in uh, our mainland China, the success rate is uh, relatively similar. And, uh, and actually, this uh, number is kind of misleading. Uh, if we take the age group into account, uh, the success rate for an uh, IVF cycle for women at age 40 would be less than uh, 10%. On average, that would be around 8 to 9%. So technically, for a woman at over 40 or above, she has to undergo 10 IVF cycles, okay? So um, let me give you a ballpark figure in Hong Kong. So if you want to have an IVF, there, um, usually people will go for a private IVF purchase. And this uh, procedure will take around 150,000 to upper uh, 200,000 uh, uh, Hong Kong dollar for one, uh, cycle. So this is a huge burden to a lot, whole lot of female, no matter it's financially or psychologically. So that's why uh, we go back to the basics to go to think about what can we do in terms of the IVF, right? So IVF is not rocket science. Uh, it has been around for 40 something years. And the first IVF baby was uh, born back in 78. So uh, for most of the technology you may have heard of uh, nowadays, uh, the technology largely work on the embryo stage that I refer as the downstream of the IVF cycle because by the time the embryo get developed, that means there's a successful fertilization between the eggs from the mother and the sperm from the father. 
So um, you may have a genetic testing. But so we take the sample from the embryo. And uh, in recent years, they are also study uh, technology trying to uh, understand the endometrium because the implantation, right? Um, after the embryo is developed, it has to be implanted back to the endometrium. So, so the endometrium health is also a very important factor for a successful pregnancy. So that's why, as I mentioned, the technologies, uh, you may have of PGT or, <clears throat> uh, uh, or, or PGFs, they are uh, mostly a similar thing uh, for molecular diagnostic uh, of the embryos. Uh, lately, uh, there are two companies, including Interlabs or Panonova. They also develop a technology for detecting the healthiness of the endometrium. So um, there's a, not a whole lot of uh, technology compared to the downstream process. The upstream process, uh, when we, we have to obtain the gamut, or we call uh, eggs uh, from the mother, and the gamma from the father. So right now, uh, the only way to, to, uh, uh, to use the gamut is uh, we call S is, we get, we, get used to, we get used to what we uh, are collected. So like in this scenario, we have four eggs uh, from a 40 year old woman, but out of these four eggs, uh, only one is usable. The reason is, uh, it's not because the other three are abnormal, it's because the, uh, the maturity of the eggs so for this one, the egg is mature. So, so that's what this is the one that can be usable for the IVF process. While the other three, even they are normal, uh, they are not, they cannot be used. So think about it. Uh, if uh, a, a woman have to undergo uh, multiple IVF cycle, there will be a kind of waste of eggs, right? Because they do a cash advance on their eggs. Uh, 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 and that, that will actually get the IVF result worse and worse if they, if they keep having the IVF uh, 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 multiple times because a lot of big eggs will be wasted in that way. So what makes the situation even more uh, depressing is that uh, female has to fight against not only the, the quality of the egg, the number of eggs, but also they have to fight against the time because uh, over the age, uh, when people, when uh, female age, the number of eggs and the quality of eggs will decline. So that's why here are the pain points that we identify uh, in this uh, uh, upstream process. There's no vascular solution for these uh, three normal eggs, and there's no quality improvement uh, for this one. So even this one is classified as mature. We all know that this egg is not equivalent in terms of quality to those younger eggs, but there's no way to, for us to improve the quality at this stage. Also, um, there's uh, also lack of quality assessment. So uh, the, uh, the quality assessment is largely from the external assessment uh, where we use the uh, morphology or appearance as the gold standard. Okay? So that's why we have two technology here where it boosts and it check to uh, allow better uh, eggs, uh, more eggs uh, to be used for the area process. So uh, that's the, uh, the technology we develop, uh, the egg boost. Uh, basically, we try to rescue the uh, immature egg that I just mentioned previously with another discarded material, a uh, discarded cell uh, from the same female. That is the cell isolated from the menstrual blood. So this specialized cell will help um, um, uh, uh, transferring an important uh, uh, component known as mitochondria. Uh, to the cell. And long story short, uh, after overnight uh, incubation, this immature egg uh, will become uh, mature and will be usable for the IVF process. So uh, we have got this uh, chip uh, uh, classified as a, 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 a medical device, a, a, a class two device in China with the regulatory approval. And we got our patent approved in the state uh, uh, November last year. So uh, this is very promising technology that we can see that we can produce up to three times more eggs, 60% uh, more uh, improvement in terms of fertility performance. In return, uh, as you may expect, uh, the, the financial stress and the pain will be reduced significantly. So uh, that's the one thing uh, we, we got the egg rescue. So in terms of egg assessment, we also try to uh, uh, do something uh, so as of what I mentioned earlier, the only assessment that we have right now as a gold standard is uh, to perform morphological assessment or appearance examinations uh, using microscopy. 
So um, don't get me wrong. Uh, there's not uh, this is a gold standard. Nothing wrong with that. But we can. I, what I would like to say is that we can do better because uh, uh, we all know this trade. Even they are uh, usable for uh, current agri practice, they may end up with very different uh, developmental uh, consequences. And uh, let me give you a, a more solid scenario. Let's say a female uh, have their egg frozen or multiple times from 2018 to 2023. In the end, uh, uh, the, the lady have to ask the doctor, right? They have to use the eggs for IVF, right? They don't just uh, store it for no reason, right? They have to use it uh, sometime. Uh, sometime uh, so a uh, question that we'll ask uh, uh, is, uh, which batch of the egg would be the best uh, for, for my IVF cycle, right? Uh, currently, there's no scientific uh, way to answer this question. Uh, the question, the, the way to perceive this, uh, the quality is largely sentimental. Let's say uh, a, a longer a longer time, uh, young, at younger age, we believe the quality would be better. The most useful one would be more fresh. So this is all sentimental assessment. It's not scientific at all. So that's why... As I mentioned, uh, back in the uh, Chinese university, we develop uh, genes, we identify genes that could be a good predictor for the quality of the eggs. So in long story short, we'll try to convert this uh, assessment into a simple color grading uh, scheme for the eggs, okay? So this is what we refer as a, a check. And did that, that is the first internal uh, assessment that we can uh, tap on for uh, oocyte quality assessment. And recently, we also developed a biophysical assessment. Uh, what I mean by biophysical is uh, like to assess the, uh, the, uh, the rigidness of the eggs, okay? Well, how soft the egg is and how rigid it is, because the uh, these biophysical properties has also uh, uh, something to do with the quality and the developmental cascade uh, later. So that's why we uh, developed a chip platform uh, that allow this uh, collection of uh, um, biophysical profile uh, from each egg. And we develop an AI model uh, uh, by, by, by studying the big data we collected from the IVF clinic and try to correlate the uh, biophysical property to the outcome of the eggs uh, after the IVF cycle. So a uh, long story short, uh, the key idea of a check is that we want to make sure uh, no poor quality egg will be used in the IVF cycle uh, or egg freezing, okay? Because uh, right now, uh, even the egg is got, uh, they, they, they got frozen, there's no guarantee that this egg could be usable, okay? So let me give you a ballpark figure. So the, the average retrieval weight uh, for the uh, frozen egg could be somewhere around 40% to 70%. It's not 100%, okay? So that's why, as I referred earlier, uh, nowadays, the, uh, uh, the, the, the female customers are very smart. They will get their egg frozen uh, multiple times to secure uh, their egg uh, reserve. So uh, this is uh, my story, personal uh, journey, how uh, I turned this uh, idea uh, of uh, egg assessment or egg rescue around 10 years ago. Uh, get the government funding. Um, so there are top, uh, many uh, government funding uh, in Hong Kong that support research. And uh, so we tap on all these resources uh, during the research stage. And uh, most importantly, when we try to uh, 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 translate this technology from bench side uh, to best side, one of the hurdles is that we need uh, uh, startup funding and, start, uh, and, and people with experience to help us to develop a company. So that's why in Hong Kong, uh, a couple of years ago, we have uh, a, a funding called TSU. So this uh, TSU scheme helped uh, researchers in the university to translate their technology and encourage them to um, create a company uh, to translate the technology. And thanks to Founder Institute, right, there are more and more uh, organizations that help us as a scientist that with zero business uh, experience to turn our dream into reality. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, one of the key things that allow us to keep continuing uh, tr the translation process is the science part. So after we got three years successful uh, uh, funding year of uh, tissue funding, uh, we proceed with the science part uh, 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 setup. Uh, this this uh, scheme or program is known as IncuBio. 
So as I mentioned earlier, the program can support up to six million Hong Kong dollar um, to support your translation. Okay. So here's the the, uh, the background of that uh, uh, program. Uh, they have uh, so to break down that six million, the two million is uh, what we refer as a uh, loan accountable uh, subsidy. That means you don't have to provide any uh, proof. Uh, we see or whatever. They will just give this free money for you to uh, uh, to do your business. Okay. The another two million is kind of a matching grant, uh, meaning uh, if you would like to buy a piece of equipment or reagents, uh, you can uh, have a subsidy up to seventy five percent. So instead, the, the rest of twenty five percent will be out of your pocket uh, from the company. Okay, so that's why finding an angel investor is also important. So don't so don't tap on uh, the six million because you also need cash from the other uh, sources. So we are very lucky that uh, we uh, got uh, angel investor funding uh, in the very early stage. So that's why uh, the timing is perfect because uh, if you don't have the angel investor uh, involvement, we will not able to shell out the twenty five percent of uh, cash. Okay, even we got into the uh, uh, science park program. The other two million is regulatory affair. For uh, biomedical uh, science or, or, or medical uh, field or biotechnology field, uh, one of the key things is that we need to get the regulatory approval. Like what Dr. Fong uh, just mentioned, uh, uh, the, uh, the healthcare vertical, one of the key, right, is to help uh, the members uh, to get through this regulatory uh, 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 process. It's really very critical, right? Uh, you may have FDA, CFDA, uh, those kind of uh, 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 regulatory requirements uh, uh, by this organization. So depending on the market, you have to identify the key regulatory body and work with them. So um, they charge a whole lot of money um, uh, for clinical trials. So these two million could be helpful, but that they are absolutely not uh, sufficient for you to uh, complete your regulatory approval process, okay? So that's why you uh, uh, you have to keep uh, finding good investor and talk to Dr. Fong how to connect the other potential uh, networking partner through Founder Institute, okay? So um, uh, on top of that, uh, they will give you a space, right? Uh, the first year uh, is the free of charge, the rent is free of charge. Uh, from second to the fourth year, that will be 50% discount. You can, uh, when an office, a and also a lab space uh, in an open lab uh, area, so uh, which is very good. Um, uh, the facility are, are, are world class, so that's why uh, you don't have to spend a whole lot of money in, in equipment uh, investment. And uh, like what I mentioned, on top of the equipment, they also provide uh, 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 people to help uh, uh, some technical aspect of your work, which is uh, very nice. Okay. Now, um, you, you, uh, you receive a, lot of, a whole lot of benefit from this program. In return, you also need to uh, provide very clear milestone uh, progress uh, to Hong Kong Science Park uh, by, uh, by identifying or defining what milestone you would expect to achieve over this uh, 48 months of, or four years of, of time, okay? Now talking about a milestone uh, uh, is that there's a whole lot of uh, paperwork uh, to be done. Uh, and so uh, that's why um, uh, I'm more than happy to share my experience. Uh, you can contact me personally, um, but then um, uh, 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 this is a very uh, nice platform for support. Now, another big expense for uh, your business, right? Particularly for startup is uh, people, right? So Hong Kong government has a very nice program called Research Talent Hub. If you are the incubator of Intubal program, you are already qualified uh, for this scheme, meaning you can hire up to four employees uh, from bachelor to PhD uh, uh, level, okay? Up to four people, uh, all four bachelor or all four PhD, doesn't matter, okay? So uh, those are the uh, external uh, additional support from the government, okay? So um, um, uh, here is a, a, just a, 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 a page showing you how we need to report to the science part. Uh, you have to very clear um, uh, mindset about your research business development, so on and so forth, and you have to keep updated 
with the science part from time to time. So um, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, time consuming uh, sometimes, but uh, that's, that's the thing uh, uh, that uh, science part uh, offer you and you have, you, this is your responsibility <laughs> to fulfill. Um, so with that, I will stop here and uh, welcome uh, any questions uh, if you have any. Thank you.